Greetings, this is Greg. I would like to talk about the very advanced supercharger drive system used in the Messerschmitt BF109. It's more advanced than any other drive system I've ever seen on a supercharger in either the aviation or automotive world. It has the advantage of being able to infinitely vary the supercharger impeller speed throughout a huge range, independently of engine RPM, and even bring the impeller to a near stop. We're going to start off here by looking at the American P-40 Warhawks Allison engine and supercharger. Like just about all World War II fighters, the P-40 has a supercharger to boost the engine's power and to help it sustain this power in the thinner air at high altitudes. Without a supercharger, the Allison engine would have a maximum manifold pressure of about 30 inches of mercury. With all other factors equal, more manifold pressure equals more power, and the supercharger is capable of delivering the engine's maximum allowable manifold pressure of 52 inches. Let's take a look at the Allison engine and its supercharger. It's mounted at the back of the engine, which was standard at the time. It's driven by gears and spins at a fixed speed based on the engine's crankshaft speed. In other words, when the engine's at maximum RPM, the supercharger is also at maximum RPM and can't be sped up or slowed down independently of the engine. The problem here is that if you gear the supercharger to provide 52 inches of manifold pressure at sea level, then as soon as you start climbing, you'll start to lose power about one inch per thousand feet. So in this case, at only 12,000 feet, the engine will only be able to generate about 41 inches of manifold pressure. That loss of power relative to the 52 inches at sea level would be massive and would put the plane at a huge disadvantage. The solution in this case, uh, at least the case of the P-40 and many other early warfighters, was to gear the supercharger so that it would have maximum manifold pressure with the throttle fully open, equal to the maximum allowable amount of 52 inches in this case, at about 12,000 feet. Of course, that means if you fully open the throttle at sea level, you will overboost and likely blow the motor. So the throttle simply isn't opened all the way until about 12,000 feet. Some early aircraft relied entirely upon the pilots to avoid overboosting. Uh, they would just simply do this by looking down at the manifold pressure gauge as they moved the throttle lever. Most mid and late war aircraft had regulators to automatically regulate maximum boost. In the event of a dogfight, it's a big disadvantage for a pilot to have to look down at the gauge all the time. It's easier if he can just shove the throttle lever to the forward stop and let the regulator give him max power. So that's what most planes did, uh, certainly by 1943. The disadvantage of this throttling system to prevent overboosting is that superchargers don't like to be throttled, and they lose efficiency when running that way. In other words, at altitudes below 12,000 feet, some power is lost due to throttling, even though manifold pressure will still be 52 inches. And above 12,000 feet, power is lost due to the drop in maximum manifold pressure since there's no way to speed the supercharger up or provide more, any more air to it to maintain pressure. Now, let's look at the 109. It's set up very differently. First, you may notice that the supercharger is driven at an angle 90 degrees to the crankshaft. I don't know why they did it that way. There are some Allied documents that suggest this was to allow space for the cannon to fire through the propeller hub, but I disagree. For some reason, nearly every supercharged German vehicle, not just planes, with a liquid-cooled engine designed in the 1930s or 40s had the supercharger off to the side and or driven at a 90 degree angle to the crank. For example, the FW190 Dora 9 was set up this way and it didn't have a cannon firing through the hub. It didn't even have the same engine. Even the Mercedes SSK had the supercharger driven at a 90 degree angle. Obviously, it didn't have a cannon. Of course, Messerschmitt did use the available space for weaponry, but I don't think that's the actual reason the supercharger was put there in the first place. If you have some thoughts on this, especially if you have a source to back it up, I would love to see it in the comments. The only thing I can come up with is that it may offer advantages in supercharger intake design since the air only has to turn 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees to reach the impeller. In my own testing in cars, that doesn't really make any difference if the intake is designed properly, is sufficiently uh, sufficient diameter piping and such. 
But then again, I'm not testing ram air intakes at 400 miles an hour. I'm testing things up to maybe 80 miles an hour, which is kind of a different world. In short, I don't know why the Germans love to drive the supercharger at a 90 degree angle to the crank. Um, I think that that, and that reason may have never been known in the English speaking world. And I think it's been lost in the German speaking world, but I don't know that for sure. Now, what's really unique here, though, is the way the supercharger is driven. It's driven by a hydraulic coupling. Technically, it's a Fottinger coupling invented by somebody named Hermann Fottinger. This type of coupling has been used in other applications, and principles of it are easily found online. Just search for Hermann Fottinger. The advantage of this coupling is that it's nearly as efficient as a direct gear drive, but allows for total speed control of the impeller. Thus, there's no need to throttle it at low altitudes. Thus, you don't get throttling losses. At low altitudes and full throttle, the coupler will automatically adjust the impeller speed for maximum manifold pressure. As the plane climbs, the pilot doesn't need to do anything. He can just leave the throttle in place, and the regulator and coupler will continue to adjust the speed so that it maintains maximum manifold pressure. This is much more effective than throttling. Throttling means cutting off the air to the supercharger to regulate boost at low altitudes. And by not having to throttle it, it just allows for more performance. And it also allows a wider range of operation. The Fottinger coupler in this application allows the ME109's engine to hold maximum manifold pressure by adjusting impeller speed from sea level up to almost 20,000 feet. That's really good for a single stage supercharger. None of this should be taken to mean that the 109 supercharging system as a whole was superior to later American airplanes. I, I don't think it is. Uh, for example, typical U.S. Navy fighters had dual superchargers with two speeds on one of them, plus intercooling. These systems were very effective. However, the 109 supercharger drive system, when viewed by itself, was generally superior, and it is a big part of the reason the 109E was equal or better to any other fighter in 1939, and even by 1945, the performance of the late 109s, like the K4, were about equal to the latest P51s. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye bye.